Well, folks, welcome back to Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. This was an unplanned episode. I was not actually planning to get an episode up this week, but behold, it's going to go up either Wednesday or Thursday as a Fight and Revive midweek special, which you're now watching, so thank you for doing that. We're still on regular schedule. Next episode out Monday. So, today we're going to be covering the Christy Noem story, and I'm going to be giving you a take on it, which might be the most commonsensical one, and yet might be the most uh, hated one, which sounds ironic, but in a way, in this culture, it's to be expected. It's going to be a little bit more of an informal episode, not edited very much. I've got my computer here. You probably can't see it. I've got my notebook. Um, I'm just going to be talking and bringing a new take on this because um, a lot of people are just going crazy condemning Christy Noem about this, and I made two YouTube shorts on it. You can go on the channel and see those, but I just didn't feel like it was enough. I decided I'm just going to make this episode. It doesn't have to be super formal. I'm just going to make it, and we're going to run with it, and we're going to talk about this Christy Noem story. I want to start by saying, first of all, because um, you're already thinking, oh yeah, here's the guy that hates dogs, he's probably a cat lover or something. No. I absolutely love dogs, I own a dog, and I am in no way saying that this story, from 20 years ago, mind you, but this Christy Gnome story is a happy story. I'm giving this commentary to bring some common sense and help bring some context to the story, as well as, as, well as explain why Christy Gnome maybe, maybe just maybe isn't literally Hitler for putting down a dog like I said, 20 years ago. So here we go. This might be the most controversial episode of days. Somehow I'll fight and revive with Adam Boyer. America is no longer one nation under God. Are you ready to fight for a revival? Well, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. Make sure to remember to subscribe to the Fight and Revive YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook so you don't miss any of our incredible content and the most conservative commentary online. Okay, so we're going to start by reading this story. The Guardian was the one who obtained the excerpt from Christy Noem's memoir. And so we're going to read that story, or at least part of it. We're not going to read the entire thing. But we're going to read the relevant parts of it, and we're going to talk about it. Okay, so it starts. Cricket, the dog, was a wire hair pointer about 14 months old. The South Dakota governor, Christy Noem, writes in a new book, adding that the dog, a female, had a, quote, aggressive personality and needed to be trained to be used for hunting pheasant. So right there you see what the dog was meant to do. It's a common use for pointers. She includes her story about the ill-fated cricket, she says, to illustrate her willingness in politics as well as in South Dakota life to do anything difficult, messy, and ugly if it simply needs to be done. By taking Cricket on a pheasant hunt with order, older dogs, Noam says, she hoped to calm the young dog down and begin to teach her how to behave. Unfortunately, Cricket ruined the hunt, going, quote, out of her mind with excitement, chasing all those birds and having the time of her life. Okay, now point number two. The dog was not serving the purpose she was being trained to do. Noam later, as you'll see, calls the dog untrainable, so it's very likely that this was not her first attempt to train Cricket. We can't say for sure, as Noam doesn't include that in the story, in this very brief story. So, we're going to see below here in just a minute where she talks about using a shot collar. So that's, again, more evidence that she's probably not just this dog room one hunt and she's ready to go shoot him. She's been trying to train him, obviously. Noam describes calling Cricket, then using an electronic collar to attempt to bring her under control. Nothing worked. There you go. Then on the way home after the hunt, as Noam stopped to talk to a local family, Cricket escaped Noam's truck and attacked the family's chickens, quote, grabbing one chicken at a time, crunching it to death with one bite, then dropping it to attack another. Okay, so now the dog is not only killing another person's livestock and property, which I should point out is grounds both in South Dakota and where I live here in Virginia, it is grounds for the family neighbor to shoot the dog or for the neighbors to request that the dog be put down. Uh, but... That may also be uh, taking away, not only is the dog killing these chickens and, this, and you know, damaging this family's property, but it may also be taking away part of this family's livelihood. Um, it doesn't say how many chickens that the dog killed. For all we know, it could have been 20 birds before Noam was able to get control of the wild dog. She does say in just a minute that he acted like a trained assassin, so presumably it was at least several birds. You know, this is farm country. Maybe the neighbors were chicken farmers and egg sellers. Lots of folks do that. Um, either way. If a dog is going to go down this path, it's going to be very difficult to correct it, especially at the age of 14 months, which I'll touch on later and has been a big bone of contention. So, we continue. 
Cricket, the untrainable dog, Noam writes, behaved like a, quote, a trained assassin. When Noam finally grabbed Cricket, she says the dog, quote, whipped around to bite me, and that's the most unacceptable part of the story, if you ask me. Then as the chicken's owner wept, so these chickens apparently meant a lot to this person, Noam repeatedly apologized, wrote the shop family a check, quote, for the price they asked, and helped them dispose of the carcasses littering the scene of the crime. <laughs> so to recap, the dog has now failed its job as a hunter, it's killed chickens, tried to attack its owner, and cost the owner an unspecified but likely at least somewhat substantial financial amount. Chickens aren't that cheap. Through it all, Noam says Cricket was, quote, the picture of pure joy. And this is where Noam's getting the, the most hate right here, other than actually killing the dog, where she says, quote, I hated that dog. I can understand, I'm not saying it's justified, but I can understand the hatred that you feel whelming in you as someone who has owned, uh, owned several dogs and owns a dog now on a farm, as a matter of fact, with a lot of chickens. My current count is between chickens and guineas. We have 60 birds. So... The point being that when she says, I hated that dog, people were acting like Na uh, Nancy Noam. Christy Noam had this sadistic impulse that she just wanted to kill this dog and torture because she hates animals. That's not at all the case, clearly. I hated that dog, Noam writes, adding that Cricket had proved herself, quote, untrainable, quote, dangerous to anyone she came into contact with, and less than worthless as a hunting dog. At that moment, Noam says, I realized I had to put her down. You probably have not heard all that context up to this point. Maybe it makes a little bit more sense now. Noam, who also represented her state in Congress for eight years, don't know why that part, that part is very randomly thrown in here. It's kind of one of those weird editorial things with news articles. Noam, who represented her state, got her gun and then led Cricket to a gravel pit. It was not a pleasant job, she writes, but it had to be done. And after it was over, I realized another unpleasant job needed to be done. Correct. It's not like Christy Noam was keeping the dog tied up in a kennel somewhere, like I said, and torturing it like she was a sadist. She did not have want to have to put the dog down. Clearly, she was not wanting to, but the animal basically left her with no choice. And if you're not convinced of that already, I'm going to keep talking here from my other notes in a minute and see if you are convinced. Continuing with the story, <clears throat> her family, she writes, also owned a male goat that was, quote, nasty and mean because it had not been castrated. Furthermore, the goat smelled disgusting, musky, and rancid, and loved to chase Noam's children, knocking them down and, running their, and ruining their clothes. Noam decided to kill the unnamed goat the same way she had killed Cricket the dog. But though she, quote, dragged him to a gravel pit, the goat jumped as she shot and therefore survived the wound. Noam says she went back to her truck, retrieved another shell, then hurried back to the gravel pit and put him down. There's not really much to discuss here with the goat. It was attacking her children, and she still killed it as humanely as possible. When she only wounded the animal the first time she tried, she hurried back to the truck to get another bullet and killed it to put it out of its misery as soon as possible. Not a whole lot to see there. So that's the story from The Guardian as they report on it, and that is what has lit the internet absolutely on fire. Hello, everybody. I'm just going to interrupt the video real quick. If you haven't unsubscribed by this point, maybe you're not going to, but if you're a fan of PETA, you probably already have. But hey, that's fine. We don't want you here anyway. Uh, if you wouldn't mind helping us in the YouTube algorithm by going to watch some more videos of mine after this to help us reach more people, that would be absolutely fantastic. Great interview with Delegate Eric Zare up. And I think one of the main problems here is that people don't understand nowadays people their their thought they think of dogs as you know this nice little indoor pet maybe he weighs 20 pounds he's got his short little perfectly groomed hair and his teeth are brushed and his breath is great and we keep him inside and he sleeps with us in our little two-bedroom apartment in the middle of memphis and then we walk him down during the sidewalk during the day and we make sure his paws don't hurt and all that that's not what dogs have been up until the last 30 years maybe not even that long what they've been meant for the difference in city and work life is just like city slash modern life and work slash farm life is just incredibly different dogs have a completely different purpose they can be pets and usually are on a farm but usually they're also meant for some useful purpose as well and when the dog fails to do that purpose to fulfill that purpose then it is now an inconvenience not only an inconvenience but a financial drain because you can't just not feed the dog so the main objections we're getting here, I'm going to go through a couple of them and answer them. Obviously, number one, that's cruel. That's the objection. Wasn't the dog being cruel by biting people and killing livestock? Because I feel like this isn't this dog sitting there with a white sheet covering and a halo over its head. That's cruel, and I'm going to address that more here in a minute. Uh, another objection. She should have tried to train it better. Okay, first of all, this is the one I don't like the most. 
she had already said that the dog was untrainable. She should have tried, uh, she had said the dog was untrainable. Another objection would be, she should have tried harder and longer. The dog was only 14 months old. So first of all, a couple of things about this. You don't know how hard Noam tried to train the dog. The dog wouldn't run with the pack, and for all we know, she mentioned the shot collar. She might have been trying to train him, that dog, every day for a year, let's say, since he was four months old with no success. So my grandfather has used to be a reserve deputy for the Campbell County uh, law enforcement, and he trained dogs and used dogs to hunt people. And as he has pointed out in a book that he's written, a fictional book, but based um, on a lot of real events and his experience with dogs called The Runt, he explains how when a puppy gets to be a lot less than 14 months, more like even six months, the puppy develops a lot of bad habits. And so if you're going to train the dog, it needs to be trained very early on because like his example was you train it for hunting coons as they used to do back in the day and I guess some people still do now then you don't want it to learn to chase rabbits early on was the example. So Noam had, people are talking about that's the big one, like this dog is only 14 months old. The difference between a 14 month old dog, like we compare it I guess to a 14 month old human, that wouldn't even cross my mind. Maybe that's how some people interpret it. A 14 month old dog is fully grown. Dogs are pretty much fully grown by the time they're nine months old, most of them. So, and again, you wanna get those bad habits out early. No one has been trying to train it and there's no success apparently. She could have given it away, that's another objection. Okay, who's going to take a dog that attacks people or animals? Um, a while back, we had a tr we had trouble with a dog who had hurt someone. It wasn't a bad injury, but it was a slight hurt, and he had never acted like this before. It was unusually aggressive for him, so we started wondering, you know, maybe do we have to give this guy away? The Humane Society in the area wouldn't even take him. A lot of Humane Societies won't take ultra-aggressive dogs. You can't get a vet near him, and if the dog's acting like that, you can't get a Humane Society. No private seller is going to come take it. So it's not that easy. You can't necessarily just train the dog either or send it off to a dog trainer. Again, the dog's proved to, this dog has proven to be untrainable. And, well, I mean, again, sometimes there's just not that many options left to do with the dog. And the last option kind of goes with that's cruel is put it down humanely. More humane than a one bullet shot. The dog felt absolutely nothing. And I guess you could argue that no one could have used euthanasia but how was that better it the dog still feels nothing against guess at the needle prick with the bullet it feels nothing and euthanasia you're paying hundreds of dollars why would you waste hundreds of dollars when you can put down the dog just as humanely keep third parties out of it there's not it's such an emotional reaction for some reason people think that when it comes to animals like you put it down with a bullet it's somehow way more inhumane than if you do it with euthanasia. <clears throat> um, but that's simply not the case. So turning a little bit, um, I hope I've convinced you now that maybe Christy Noam isn't the, you know, Satan, I guess, um, as so many people on the left and right are acting like she is. Um, and here's the thing. As I explained in part two of that YouTube short I did, the fact that so many of these people, the PETA people, everyone else, are the same people who would turn around and rapidly, no pun intended, push for abortion and killing children to the tune of hundreds of thousands of babies murdered every single year is just disgusting and appalling. Well, that's different. The dog was, th uh, or with the baby, maybe uh, maybe the baby's threatening the, the mother's life. Well, the dog has now been attacking, it's attacked Noam, it's attacked the neighbors, livestock maybe it's going to attack other neighbors lives or, or other neighbors other people other children maybe it'll attack her children if it senses there's a threat um you know if it senses that they are a threat that's simply no excuse um what would another excuse be it, it would greatly inconvenience the mother for whatever reason whether that be economic or otherwise I would say this dog was an inconvenience. Noam had been trying to train this now 14-month-old dog for goodness knows how long, and the dog had cost her time, cost her a hunt, I think it was a pheasant hunt, and now money, and again, endanger people around it. Ultimately, at the end of the day, no matter what argument you throw at me, it does not matter, because human life is intrinsically more valuable than animals, and you can argue that all you want, but while we're all made, humans and animals, we're all God's creation. Man is made in God's image. Animals are not. 
in this highly sensitive and in some ways sanitized and certainly emotional culture, we've come to think of animals as humans. You see this, I guess, in the, in the language we use, dog mom or fur baby, you know, dog parent, etc. But the fact is, they're not humans. That, I guess you can sort of tie that into the evolution theory anyway of, you know, like, well, humans are just higher animals or whatever. That's not true. As I said earlier, whereas that line is increasingly culturally blurred between humans and animals, especially in the city or the suburbs and in modern life and in evolution, the fact of human over animal superiority is nowhere clearer seen than on a farm. And like it or not, that's the way things are, and it is not abuse or cruelty. Animals die on farms, they're murder murdered in cold blood, as a matter of fact, every single day to make hamburger or bacon or chicken soup. If you have a problem with that, so be it. You can be a pita vegan dietist. I don't know. I don't, I don't care. You do whatever you want. But if you're condemning Christy Noam with this outrage and this vitriol that we've seen, and you don't find the murder of hundreds of thousands of humans a year, and I think the best estimates are around 80 million children murdered in cold blood since the 1970s or so, and you don't find that more morally outrageous and a lot more morally outrageous than a dog, a farm dog getting killed 20 years ago, there is something seriously wrong with you. And sadly, that's the case about a bunch of our culture. There's something wrong with a lot of our culture. And it's the lack of acceptance of God, the disappearance of Christianity, to put it uh, simply. We go a lot deeper than that, but I'm not going to in this episode. So, was Christy Noah wrong to kill Cricket the Pointer Dog? I don't think so, but maybe you disagree. Regardless, is this the most outrageous story of the year? No. Is it even close? No, absolutely not. But, looking at this from purely a political perspective, has Christy Noam blown her already slim shot at becoming VP? I think the answer to that is a resounding yes. In the words of our great president, look here, Jack, I'll challenge you to push-ups, but that's neither here nor there. Don't forget to subscribe to the Fight and Revive YouTube channel and help us reach more people with our conservative message.